Welcome back to Small Arms Farms, and today in this video, we're gonna go over hot weather EDC carry pistols. Now, what do I mean by like hot weather summer carry? Mostly like for someone like me that is skinny, whatever, um, carrying like a compact or even like the X macro, wearing gym shorts and lightweight t-shirts, they like to print a lot on me, especially with wind blowing or anything like that or being active. So I need to have something that's gonna be a little smaller and that's where the original P365 was great at doing. I mean, you could almost use that as a pocket pistol. It was so small. And over the last year, my go-to carry has been the Shalotech 17 round lower, um, which is this, and using the Parker Mountain Machine Comp with the 3.7 inch barrel, so an XL uh, barrel length P365. Unfortunately, the little bit of an extended grip and just the size of the pistol really just prints a little more now in all reality is that a big deal probably not because most people aren't staring at your crotch level and they're probably never going to notice it but for me just being able to wear clothes that are comfortable for me at 95 or plus degrees and hot days and I don't always want to wear pants and I think another part of that which is huge in the firearms community is people just look at concealed carry as, oh, I have to wear tactical pants, a tactical belt and starchy clothing, long sleeve shirts. I've spoke with people that that's the reason why they don't want to carry every day or conceal carry, I should say, because they think it's super uncomfortable and they can't wear the clothes that they normally wear. And I really think that a video like this can help show that you can, and you can do it comfortably and you can do it without printing and you can still be effective with your concealed carry. First, we're gonna talk about the belt. Since a lot of the times in the summer, I wear pants or shorts, mostly shorts without belt loops, I need something that doesn't need belt loops. So this is a belly band from Blackhawk. You're gonna see an image up here. This is the stash nacho or something. Uh, I really like this because of this belt that they have built into it. So this is a very, very stiff nylon belt that's built into it for your holsters. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit all holsters, as this holster that's designed for light bearing is really, really difficult to get in and out of there. So much so that I haven't been using this lately. Um, I do love this belly band and I have a new holster on the way and I'm going to stop using a light on my EDC. More on that in a minute. Um, but this is super comfortable. It stays put. And you have that added safety of having your full Kydex holster in here for trigger protection. There's other belly bands out there that are just like a neoprene sleeve that you stick your pistol in and running or jumping up and down and any other kind of movements like that cause it to almost wiggle out. And in theory, you could really stick your finger on there on those neoprene parts and push a trigger to where it could go off. I have yet to hear of that actually happening, but it's a possibility. The other part about this is, um, especially if you're wearing something like um, gym shorts, this gives you a bunch of extra little pockets um, that you can put different things in, whether it's your phone, uh, slides right in there. And so you can carry these on you if you don't have any pockets. So I know a lot of the ladies out there complain that their pants or shorts don't ever have pockets. This thing's got you covered and it secures it nice and tight. I was running with this thing with a pistol in it and it does not move. And it just has that added security of being able to use a retention Kydex holster in there. So I really do like this belly band a lot. Now, since I can't use the belly band currently, there is another one that I have spoken about in my EDC belt video, which is from Comfort Concealment. And this one is its own belt. So it's a neoprene belt with silicone built onto it to where it's nice and grippy onto your shorts. So if you start doing any kind of active movement, 
the silicone does actually stick to your shorts very well for just like your gym shorts. With that being said, it also attaches to your Kydex holster just like a normal belt would. It's just very flimsy, it's lightweight. I've been using this non-stop this summer so far because my current holster setup is a light bearing holster, which does not fit very well inside of the Blackhawk belly band. So a few of the benefits of the comfort concealment one is it's very lightweight. It's not as tall as the belly band on you. Um, you barely even notice it, you're wearing it. With that being said, in hot weather, it also doesn't cause you to sweat as much because the belly band is a much larger a belt and it can cause you to sweat a little bit more so this is more comfortable now as far as staying in place and active movements it does a pretty good job at it jumping up and down running around being active all day I didn't have any issues with this but the belly band version does stay put better it is much more secure and I will go with the belly band again even though you sweat a little bit more and it's not as comfortable it still is fantastic at what it does the difference is here is though is this is just like your normal belt it'll fit any size holster with sidecars and light attachments anything you want because you can attach basically the whole length of the belt uh, it is velcro um, attachment for it and i don't know how long this will last to be honest um, so far in about two months worth of use it has held up great i haven't had any issues with it coming off of me um, and the other huge benefit of it is it's super cheap. Compared to some of the other EDC belts that you wear that are nice, stiff, nylon, or with steel inserts, this thing's only, I think, 40 bucks. You're seeing an image on your screen right now. And I actually thought I lost my first one. Turns out it was just in like some back pocket of my trunk in my car. I don't know why I put it there, but I ordered another one because they're so cheap and now I have two. And I, I don't have any regrets about that. Now, another benefit for the belly band is if you use a holster with a wing or a claw on it, um, since this is kind of like a nylon, when you put that in, it's not gonna have as much tension on the wing to push that grip back into your belly, into your abdomen. Uh, I tighten this up pretty good and I haven't had too much of an issue, but the actual nylon band on the belly band um, does seem to push that grip into your abdomen a little better. Some people might not, might not like that, but it, when it comes to avoiding printing with active wear shirts and gym shorts, I like it to push back as much as possible. Not a huge difference by any means. It still conceals very well, and I can't recommend either of those belts enough. If you're really looking for gym shorts belts, I would go with those. I've tried the Filster Enigma, and there's just so much going on with it. It's okay on the comfort level, but I hate the leg strap and the adjustments on it just take a long time. I had to sell it. Okay, onto the real deal here. We have the belts. Um, we're gonna talk about the pistol. So the one I have switched to, which is not much of saying I switched, is still gonna be a Shalo Tech lower with the P365, um, XL length slide on it with the Parker Mountain dedicated compensator and 3.7 inch barrel. Uh, the optic is an EPS carry from Hollow Sun, and what is going bye bye is going to be the light. Maybe going off a little bit on a tangent here, and I know some people are going to completely disagree with me. Um, my home defense firearms all have lights on them because it could be night, I could be sleeping, it could be dark and I need a light to positively identify what the threat is or the target is, because it could just be one of my children stumbling around in their sleep in the, on the first floor. I don't know what it's going to be. So I need a light to be able to identify the target. The difference is on an EDC for concealed carry, this is not coming out of the holster unless I have already completely identified a threat. I'm not drawing this firearm out unless the trigger is going to be pulled. So I already know what I'm shooting at. I don't need a light necessarily to tell me that. The size of the holsters and the ease of concealing and carrying makes it a little bigger. And to a point to where it, it's just kind of annoying. 
and I want to make sure that people are always going to be carrying at least so we can defend ourselves so we have that ability and I'm going to be removing the light from my concealed carries because of that. If you're pulling your pistol out to scare someone or to end a fight without having to make a shot then you're doing it wrong that's a crime. If you draw your pistol it better be because your life is in danger or you face grievous bodily harm and that's how the law is written depending on your state I should say. I already know what my target is. I've already identified the threat. I don't need a light to do that. Whereas in my house, I really do need a light. So my shotguns, my rifles, my handguns that I have in the house do have lights on them. And that's what I will rely on. Again, from the previous video, this is the Tyrant CNC and Telefire trigger. Still love it. It has the also has the tactical trigger spring kit in here. Um, what we're going to compare though is what I was previously using as my summer carry was the stock P365 XL grip module. This has the laser stippling from the factory on it. And then it also has the Tactical Development Pro Ledge. So it's similar to a gas pedal, but it's just a ledge. So it does give your thumb a nice spot to grip. It is a good indexing spot, and I really do like how it shoots. Uh, we're going to, we went to the range, and I have high-speed footage kind of comparing this setup with the same FCU, same trigger and everything, with the same upper barrel uh, optic, all of that. Uh, the Shalo Tech and the high speed you'll notice is the one that will have the light on it. What I really wanted to test and see was if this makes a huge difference with an actual gas pedal or what Shalo Tech calls a thumb throttle versus just the ledge. And the Shalo Tech actually has a w slightly wider grip. Um, I don't know if the camera is really picking that up, but that wider grip, it's not much and it doesn't cause it to print anymore on my body when I'm wearing it, but it fills your hand up significantly better than just the stock XL. Whereas my fingers pretty much wrap all the way around this and I don't really have anywhere for my offhand to go. These are newer Complaints that we can now make against micro and subcompact pistols as the technology keeps advancing and we realize that hey We can implement things from the Competition pistol shooting world into duty carry World of pistols because they work so well now. I just got this. So this is the 12 round um, Lower from Shalo Tech. So if you've seen any of my previous videos or you know anything about Shalo Tech, they sell these kits so the whole pistol's modular, and I'm showing you some images on your screen here. So I started with the 17 round lower. Again, I felt this was too large for everyday carry in the summer for me here. And now I have converted it over to the 12 round lower. Uh, what that includes is this lower piece, the back strap, um, and the grip panels. A nice thing that Shalo Tech just recently did, and um, I reached out to them about this because one of my original videos I even discussed when I was reviewing them, the grip panels on here don't have a whole lot of texture on them. I would say they're better than most of the other compact carry pistols I have held, like the stock P365 and like Glocks or the Beretta, the PX4 Storm, I believe it is, the Daniel Offense. Like these were still better, but they could have more texture. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, they could have more. And they did that. So I was having some issues with the autofocus. I had to fix it. But um, so this is the new really textured grip that Shalo Tech has released. And it just has way more texture on it than the original one. And this is apparently their new standard one. So when the new grip arrived that had this really kind of aggressive it doesn't tear up your hands. It still isn't as aggressive as the lock grips on my Shadow 2, but it is a nice improvement. It really keeps your hand there. I mean, if you had wet hands, or blood on your hands, this grip's not going anywhere. But my concern was, how is this gonna feel against my abdomen, bare skin, all day, rubbing up and down on it, especially if I'm moving actively? After wearing it just 48 hours straight since I got it, I didn't even notice any difference compared to 
the stock P365XL one. I don't know how they did it or why it's like that, but I did not notice it. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll some footage here of trying to compare the XL versus the Shalo Tech and the tactical development ledge versus the thumb throttle. So now it just takes the 12 round mags instead of the 17 round macro. So I don't have a problem with my pinky fitting all the way on there. The, the heel of my hand though does slide off, not slide off necessarily, it, it just protrudes further. So I do get a better grip with the 17 round uh, frame compared to the 12, but as co compared to the regular stock X macro, which I only really get, my hand just goes all the way around it. There's zero palm swell to it. And I don't feel like I have as much room here. Uh, the ledge on this is nice, that tactical development ledge, but nothing beats that thumb throttle that Shalo Tech puts out. So. Yeah, and just looking at the high speed already, this thing's insane. I mean, it's just insane how flat that this Shalo Tech stuff shoots. Well, Thank you, Vincent T, for subscribing. That was a 202. The first shot was a 90. Then a 25, a 23, a 21, a 22, a 21 to give me a 202. So, I mean, I definitely run some of my competition guns faster, obviously. Uh, but the trigger feels great. This Tyrant Designs trigger, I really like it. The Tactical Trigger Spring Kit that's put in here really does work phenomenally. But a lot of that recoil mitigation and coming back to zero is right here from Parker Mountain. And this thumb throttle from Shalo Tech really just makes a world of a difference. This one at 188. So that was an 82 first shot. Then a 24, then a 22 split, then a 19, then a 20. Then a 21. So as I'm warming up, I'm kind of bringing those splits down. Uh, first shot's getting a little bit better. Uh, now let's go ahead and take this apart. We're going to swap the FCU and the slide over to the stock with the tactical development ledge. If I could hit high speed for once in my life, damn it. So I've definitely warmed up. It's a 199 with an 80 on a first shot. 25, 26, 23, 24. 21 so the splits are slower I can feel it rocking a little bit more not a lot um, obviously those splits are pretty damn close to what I was getting with the Shalo Tech but it doesn't feel as comfortable and and the dot is definitely to where is the dot kind of stayed like a couple inches from the top of the A zone now the dots going past it so it is giving me a little more rise we're gonna have to get on high speed though and get actual proof of that if I can actually remember to hit it with my toe. I need to get a help with a cameraman. There's a 214, an 87 first shot, and then a 29, a 26, a 21, 24, and a 27. I'm going to go back to the Shalo Tech here in a second. I want to shoot a couple more mags with this one. Kind of go back and forth. See where I feel. And then obviously get home and look at the high speed and see if I can actually tell the difference in the rise and the follow-up shots and see what kind of impact having that, just that better texture and a little bit wider grip with that thumb throttle that sticks you planted. I want to put a big thank you out there to Cherry Creek Gun Club for letting me come out here and do this. I am a member at the range. It's a lot of fun here. CherryCreekGunClub.org. Check them out if you're in the Colorado area and you're looking for an awesome indoor range. 20 pistol bays, automatic carriers, two indoor 100-yard rifle ranges, chronograph setup, all that good stuff. Heating, air conditioning. It's your all-year-round shooting center. So just from that range session, what I can take from that is... The thumb throttle from Shalo Tech, the dedicated gas pedal, it plants your thumb there to where you have leverage, where you can hold it steady and it doesn't want to flip up and down as much. I didn't really see a huge difference in my split times. And you can see that from the high speed footage that we're showing here. 
the times were faster. But when you're talking faster in like two one hundredths of a second, four one hundredths of a second, you really don't notice it a whole lot when you're shooting it or when you're watching it on high speed. But you can see that at majority of the time, I'm shooting the Shalo Tech lower faster than the stock one with the Tactical Development Pro Ledge. I only give that to the fact that it just feels more stable in the hands. It feels like I have a more secure grip and I can control it better. Same triggers and everything, and I did a lot of shooting with this. I wanted to warm up, so I did about five build drills with each, a couple more, a couple more, and then I started kind of really, the footage you're seeing is the comparison of towards the end where I was warmed up on both of them to make sure that I was getting a more consistent result. And my split times with the Shalo Tech were usually around anywhere from 18 to 22, whereas the stock one were more like 19 to 25. It's not a real difference, especially when it comes to self-defense, where there's going to be a whole lot more factors involved than your just ability to pull the trigger three hundredths of a second faster. But where I did notice a difference in shooting it was the dot and how the dot would leave the A zone with the stock XL lower, and then I'd wait for it to come back down and pull the trigger. Whereas using the Shalo Tech grip, the dot would never leave the A zone. So it was really just as fast as I could pull the trigger. And apparently I'm not as fast as a lot of you crazy ass hats out there. So if you're someone like me that always wants to have the best tools to get a job done, that's why I have the other grip modules. I love the full 17 round Shalo Tech lower put onto this thing and it works phenomenally. This thing basically, as we've seen in my other videos, Shoots like a competition pistol, but it's a carry subcompact gun. I have no problem with the 12 plus one capacity with this. It still shoots phenomenally, basically the exact same as the 17 round one, but it prints less. It's not cheap to have both versions of it. So I leave that up to you to decide if you live in a hot weather environment and you're skinny like me, the 12 round might be your best bet for all year round. Or if you don't care and you feel like you can seal it without printing, man, Nab that 17 round one because it just fits in the hand a little better. We always want a bigger pistol when shit hits the fan and we always want a smaller pistol when we're trying to conceal comfortably. So it's finding that balance and really hoping that it works well for you in your budget. Like I said, this thing is lights out phenomenal compared to what we had just eight years ago. This is knockout. I mean, this thing works so well, but I was just willing to pay the extra for this to get even better confidence in my grip and being able to hold on to it when it's wet maybe, or like I said, you have blood on your hands or you maybe have oil or grease on your hands. Who knows? This is something I would consider a full on great concealed carry or even duty level pistol with how they've redesigned the grip panels on this as well. Well, everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. I thought it was kind of funny while I was filming at the range, got a notification for a new subscriber. So I think I'll start doing that from now on. If I get a notification while I'm filming, I might shout your name out. That's a risk. If you want to subscribe and maybe get that to happen, awesome. If not, then don't subscribe. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming. Have a good one.